All right, hello everyone. My name is Peter, and I hope you're doing all right today. Um, on the docket for this video is I, well, I just want to sit around, hang out with you, and take some time to just uh, draw on a piece of paper with a pen. And you can hang out with me, and you can draw along with me, or do whatever you're also doing. Same time, you can do anything. You can listen, you can watch, do both, do neither, whatever. I'm just going to draw. I'm not going to speed up the video at all and uh, talk and draw and we can, it's, it's drawing with Peter. All right. I'm actually going to start off the video by playing a little song on the guitar just because I can, I guess. I'm not the best player or singer, but uh, I want to, so I will. Why does she sing her sad songs for me? I'm not the one to tenderly bring her soft sympathy. I've just begun to see my way clear and it's plain. If I stop, I will fall. Can lay down a tear for her pain just a tear and that's all what does she want me to do she says that she knows the moments are rare I suppose that it's true then on she goes to say I don't care how she knows but I do maybe she just has to sing for the sake of the song who do I think that I am to decide that she's wrong Now let's get down to it. Here today I'm using the uh, Kaweco Sport. I know in the last video I, where I talked about this kind of pen, I swore that I was going to start calling it Kaweco, but then in the comments so many people started telling me about a thousand different ways that they were sure that it was pronounced. So then I was thrown into a whole nother realm of uncertainty and I've decided that really the main thing is that when I talk about it, you know what I'm talking about. So if I say Kaweco, 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 uh, you know what I'm talking about? This brand of pen. This is the Kawe Kaweco Sport. Kaweco, Kawe whatever. All right, let's draw. Now, one of the main reasons I use these uh, fountain pens for videos like this is that I can have the camera straight above the paper, like I do now, and my hand is less likely to cover what I'm doing because, you know, you can draw with the pen kind of angled off to the side. Lots of times when I draw with, like, these uh, Rotring isographs, you know, they work better when you hold it more straight up and down. So then I have to have the, the camera kind of angled off to the side a little bit so my hand doesn't cover up what I'm doing. That's just one one reason. So I'm just going to start drawing here, kind of up at the uh, the upper left hand side of the drawing and I'll work my way down this way maybe. So that way I'm less likely to put my hand on top of the on top of the drawing and smudge what I've done, right? Right? Yes. This Bristol paper is pretty good at not smudging. So I like that about it. This this pen has a nib that's pretty uh, pretty firm. It does flex a little bit, as you can see, but pretty firm. And I like how scratchy it kind of feels. There are a lot of other pen nibs, and maybe the ones with kind of more of a ball. Some some of the nibs have kind of a ball on the end of them that uh, 
make it feel a little more smooth and buttery, which is fine too. It is interesting, like I mentioned before, how just, just the wide variety of feelings you can get from different pen nibs, even though maybe at first glance they all look the same. So once again, I'm just embracing the current phase I'm in of swirly, blobby, kind of organic things. I figure if I, the more I just embrace it, and then once I get it all out of my system, then I'll move on to something else. I mean, maybe that'll work, maybe it won't. But uh, don't want to fight. I don't want to like actively fight against my own artistic urges. I don't know if that will work very well. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Kind of bulb it out this way. Like some darker sections. Darker section in here. This one I'm, just because I'm recording it, I'm keeping it well, it's, I feel like this drawing is probably midway between slow, careful, meticulous, and fast and sketchy. Also, every now and then I will stop and kind of give my hand a break because I think it is important to do that. I, I usually do that subconsciously, but when I'm recording myself drawing like a, a real-time video like this, I'm less likely to do it because uh, you know I just want to keep drawing. But, but then eventually I can, I feel some tightness and discomfort kind of in my hand right here, maybe in the top of my knuckles. It's good to take breaks, right? Don't push yourself too hard. Don't do it. Anyways, I hope you all are doing okay. Considering everything, I know it's a weird time right now. A lot of you could be struggling for um, a lot of different reasons. I know this whole crazy situation we're in is affecting a lot of different people a lot of different ways, and I'm sorry about that. I'm very thankful that I can, uh, that I am able to work from home and do my school from at home, but still, it is a weird time. I'm glad you all can at least tune into this and hang out with me for a few minutes. Just take a few minutes to breathe, relax. And chill out. Darkening in this little section here. I might zoom in a little bit more, since we can. There we go, until we, until we find ourselves expanding beyond the frame of the camera. Hopefully I'll remember to zoom back out. I like drawing these kind of, uh, this little section, it's like hatching, curved parallel lines. I think you can call them Parallel lines, even if they're curved, right? Maybe? I don't know. It's kind of the same idea. Also, the other day, I took a selfie. There's just a little update on me. I took a selfie. Okay, that's not the update in itself. I know that's pretty exciting. Oh, but I took a selfie because I had, like, nice... My, my hair was more curly than usual, so I wanted to both commemorate the curliness with a picture and it, not more curly than usual, but just a nice level of curly. Just the curls were a nice size. The scale of the curls were pleasing to me. Sometimes it's like too curly. I don't like it, but the, the level of curls was pleasing to me in some way. And so I took a picture uh, with kind of with my kind of my face facing away from the camera a little bit, kind of like of the side of my head, the side, the, the top side of my head a little bit. And then I looked at the picture and I noticed there were a few, it's like a strand, a streak 
uh, almost a whole lock of hair that looked gray. Now, I'll tell you how old I am. I'm, I'm 29 years old, okay? So, I mean, I'm not ancient, but I mean, I was suddenly hit with mortal terror at that. And I'm not, to be honest, it looked, it didn't look bad. Like, I kind of like the, uh, I don't know if you'd call it, I guess if you're blonde and you have some gray, it's not really a salt and pepper look. I guess salt and pepper more refers to white and gray together. But, I mean, I don't think it looked bad, the uh, the, the dash of gray in the blonde. I think my hair is blonde. Maybe a, kind of a darker blonde, dirty blonde. I don't know what it is, but it didn't look bad. But still, you know, it suddenly makes you think. I had like a tiny existential crisis, even though I'm not one... I'm usually not much of one to like, you know, like overanalyze my appearance or something. I mean, I spend probably a normal amount of time looking in the mirror every day. Whatever a normal amount of time is, who knows? But then I remembered when I was little, I remembered that my mom. I used to have much shorter hair. At one point, my mom. Gave me a buzz cut, like really short, maybe with like the clippers with no attachment. My mom used to cut my hair, okay, because uh, I grew up, I was born in the Philippines, right? So I, my, my parents were missionaries, so my mom had to learn how to cut her hair because, you know, I guess that was part of their training or something. And so, because, you know, you have to be able to cut hair. Because you might not always be somewhere where people can cut your hair for you anyway. So most of my life, I probably didn't go to an actual barber till I was like 18 years old. Anyways, my mom cut my hair most of my life. And I remember her telling me that she would often see like a little spot of gray on the top of my head. So I think it's just that same spot. Like I don't think I'm actually going gray yet. Even though I wouldn't be totally upset if I was. I don't really know what I'm trying to say right now. But I think it's, it's like a pre-existing condition, right? Yeah. It's been there for a while. It's like maybe like a birthmark that grew hair sort of deal. You know how moles have their own different kind of hair that come out of them? And I love to pull the, the long dark hairs out of moles, except someone told me that that can increase the chance of the mole becoming cancerous or something, which oh, that sounds like some weird sort of like fear mongering. Like, I don't know if that's true and I'm afraid to Google it, but I have noticed that eventually if I pull the hair out too many times, then... It does increase the chance of the hair becoming ingrown, which isn't good. So I try to leave them alone for now, even though it is satisfying because they become so weirdly long. They're like eyelashes growing out of your arm. I'm sorry for talking about this if it's gross, but... Sorry, i got to rest my hand again. Let me zoom out a little bit now. Here we go. I don't know why I like drawing these. They're like clumps of biological moss or something. It's like little fungal growths. We could add some more lumps over here. Something spurting off to the side here. Oh yeah. bit dark underneath. This needs to be darker down here probably in between all this stuff. Darken this up. And this. And all in here. And here maybe. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and like color all this in. I call it coloring in, even though it's just black, but still, it's the same idea. And then I'll come back later and add some more details that will kind of fill in. It'll, 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 I'll come back to it, you know. You can do this. You can leave yourself spots that you can come back to later. It'll be fine. This is the nice thing about some of these fountain pens is they just... They're just so generous with the ink. Very satisfying.
when I do these videos, I really do realize how often I must normally take breaks when I'm doing regular videos. Sorry. Stretching. Remember to stretch. Ooh. Okay. Don't hurt yourself while doing something like drawing. It's a real blow to the ego when you have you sustain an injury doing a low impact activity like drawing. That happens to me with video games sometimes. If I like play a video game, I have a very I have the very impressive capability, I think, to play video games for the whole day. I mean, for like 16 hours at a time, you know. And then, you know, afterwards, like my wrist or something, something will be hurting. And uh, it doesn't make me feel very cool to get injured just while sitting still all day. I guess it's like, was it like repetitive stress injury or something like that? It's a legit thing. R is that what it's called? RSI? It's getting a little bubbly and cloudy down here at the bottom. Let me work on I'm gonna work on this little spout here. It's kind of branching off out of this bulb, which we can add some shading to. Tap 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 tap. I'm doing this video because in my last video I saw in the comments one person saying well, asking for it. And then I thought, hey, I actually haven't done one of those recently, so here we are. Also, in the last video, I want to apologize for giving airtime to a negative comment. I really, it used to be years ago that I really did let a lot of, it's just like a tiny, it's a crazy ratio, almost entirely really nice positive comments right on my videos i'm very thankful for the community i have here on youtube uh, but then there'll be like one in a hundred comments that's just you know s someone having a bad day or something and they leave a negative comment and that's the one that sticks in my head for some reason and it used to be that those would really get to me but lately i think i've been doing better at just ignoring them you know it used to be that i wanted to like reply and respond and you know get into ar argument with them for some reason but but then, I don't know, I need to get better at not even mentioning them. I know I'm kind of mentioning them still right now, but I just wanted to apologize for when I did mention it. Just I just kind of let it go, you know, let it go. I like this. This is, this looks like mold or something you'd see drawing, see, see growing maybe on like a, a damp, rotten tree trunk in a forest somewhere. Also, I wanted to apologize for, this isn't too much apologizing, but some people, I think, rightly pointed out that in the previous video where I drew something, I drew a picture with the prompt, um, where are you, right? And then I drew a picture that obviously had some level of personal meaning to me, right? And then I didn't share what the personal meaning was. Like it was a drawing of a person uh, that looked like they were in the ocean or in some waves. Uh, and they're like holding up some sort of platter or shield and there's a wave crashing and maybe bouncing off of the shield. And then there's like a big wave behind them. And, and then like a dark kind of rainy or kind of ominous sky even behind that. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, I think I was feeling vulnerable for, for the first time in a long time of drawing something that actually had some personal meaning for me. Cause lots of times I just draw stuff like this, which I mean, this does mean a lot to me. Like I read, this resonates with me and I enjoy it, but this doesn't mean like one specific thing to me. Right. Like that drawing did. And so. I didn't share what it meant. I, I, I said, you know, like, I don't want to say what it means because I want everyone to interpret it for themselves. And I guess even if I do share what it means, people will still interpret it for themselves, right? I mean, that that's probably inevitable. No matter what, no matter what I say, people will 
always draw their own conclusions. So I apologize if it felt like I was holding back in some way. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess I can tell you now pretty much what I meant by that drawing. If according to the prompt, where are you? I guess I really did feel at that time when I planned out the drawing, I was trying to represent, like some people mentioned in the comments, I think they got it right. I was, I was feeling overwhelmed and I do feel overwhelmed sometimes. Um, just the guy in the ocean, of course, is me. And I'm like kind of treading water or in the ocean, danger of danger of drowning. You know, I'm not like, I don't think I'm depressed or anything. And another reason why I was afraid to say what it meant to me is I didn't want people to like suddenly be like really worried about me. Right? Because, I mean, this has been, this is probably how I felt for a long time. And I've been doing okay not telling people. I don't know. It's a weird thing sharing your, <laughs> some of your deeper feelings uh, with people. But um, but yeah, that guy in the ocean is me, of course. And then uh, the platter that he's holding, it is kind of a platter, I guess. Um, it's just like the platter he's holding up is, that's like the small amount of, of tools I have. That's a small amount of things that I can do to control the things in my life, right? Like those are the things I can do to help um, and, and control what's going on. I can I can like deflect a tiny amount of that big wave crashing down around me. Most of life is out of my control. Um, and then that big wave behind me is just me being afraid of no matter like what I do, there's still like all the rest of life out there. Like who knows what big thing could happen at any time, right? Like who knows? I'm always like afraid of like, when's the other shoe going to drop? Like who knows what could happen? It could all, it all, I'm just, I guess just being afraid of the future, I guess. Is, is that normal? Anyways, that's that's not all of it, but that's all I can put into words at the moment, I guess. Hopefully that helps a little bit. I don't know if that's weird to talk about in this video, but... There you go. Thank you for everyone who expressed um, any amount of concern for me, and who mentioned that they did want to know what it really meant. You're all very kind. And I'm ultimately, I'm doing okay. All right. I'm doing okay. And, uh, you know, I'm thankful that, you know, for, I'm, I'm ultimately living a very cushy and uh, privileged lifestyle here. So I'm not trying to complain or anything. So thank you. Also, this drawing is going very cool. These look like weird feathers or scales or ribs or something right here. I guess I could, tr in some way I might want to connect these two parts right here, but in some ways maybe I don't want to. This part over here looks kind of like tree trunk texture now to me. Just kind of realizing that. Also to all the people that say, I sound like I'm about to burp all the time. I think it's probably true. Like right now, I think I kind of sound like that. And I just kind of burped. I don't know why I always sound like that, but you're not wrong. I mean, I love burping. I do drink a lot of seltzer water, but I mean, I haven't drank any today. And I just, I don't know, just, you know, people, we're, humans are weird. Some of us sound like we're about to burp all the time. And I'm one of them. So, take it or leave it. It's okay. My 
nice little textures down here. I love texture. I do. Text texture. Texture. And scribbles. You can make great textures just by like scribbling like this. And to make this part a little darker, maybe to show that it's like underneath this part. I don't know. Sometimes you try to make a little change like this to, and and then you regret it because you're like, no, that's not the effect I was trying to get. But then you just tuck that away for the next drawing. Be like, you know what effect you're trying to achieve, and you know one thing you've tried in the past that didn't work. So you just try something else. Just a lot of trial and error, experimenting. And it's all gravy. I might draw some more little lines up here, like little what are they, could you call these like contour lines to give this a little bit more? Not contour. No, contour lines would be like around the outside. These are like, I don't know what these would be. Hmm. Those are a little tough to draw because I was trying, I would like to have drawn those by resting my hand here, but I'm afraid to put my hand there lest I smudge. I sung that, oh, this, by the way, I meant to mention that the song I sung at the beginning of the video was the first verse of um, a song by Towns Van Zant, For the Sake of the Song, I think it was called. I've been listening to a lot of Towns Van Zant. I, I have a, I listened to a bunch of them, and then I bought one of his records so I've been listening I have like a little record player I listen to sometimes I can't listen to it very loud because you know I don't want to disturb my neighbors I have a dream that one day I'll have like a, a house or something or a studio or somewhere where I can just plug it have my record player and plug it into some speakers and just let her rip you know and just jam out to some some music records or not you know but there's something about records I know it's very hipstery to listen to records but there's something about it that makes the music listening process kind of more intimate, more interactive. I don't know. I know it's it's definitely not practical. I don't think anyone who buys records thinks it's practical when you know you can just listen to it on YouTube or Spotify or something. But it's fun, okay? People people we're allowed to do fun things. And I'm not I'm not trying to defend the uh the practicality of records at all, which some people try to attack the practicality of records, but I don't think anyone's trying to defend it. It's fun though. I've been buying a few and I think it's a good, I hope, I hope it's a good way to support the artists. I guess some of them are dead, but I don't know, maybe their families get it. I hope it's not just the record companies that get the proceeds from dead artists record sales, but I guess I should look into that. Hmm. Trying to figure out what I want to do along here now. This reminds to me this looks now like reminds me kind of of Treebeard from Lord of the Rings. Not necessarily of how Treebeard looks, but just like some sort of sentient forest being. Like this is one arm, a one-armed forest being, and this is its weird deformed face. Not deformed, but weirdly formed. Like it has a weird mushroom for a face. When I say weird, I mean it with the utmost reverence. I like weird. I think a lot of us do. I hope. I could kind of continue this weird bubbly 
floor, this, this, this stuff around behind here. To make it more look like this tree is in the midst of this stuff, right? Yeah, I think so. If it truly is a tree, which is not confirmed. Now I want to draw these root root things kind of going off here into the... And what I need to f do, figure out is kind of how to make the roots kind of split off to their own thing, which I think might entail drawing some of the bubbles kind of sprouting up in between them. Uh, I'll do that in a second. Here we go. This root is getting a, a little smaller. But I need bubbles in front. Okay. You gotta kind of plan it out a little bit when you need stuff to overlap, like here. We'll see how it works. You know, and then, so these bubbles kind of are going in front of this root, and the root kind of peeks out from behind it now. Like so. Don't worry, don't worry, it'll come together. I mean, or it might not. It's okay either way. I'm going to draw some more right here. This one's going to totally, this root's going to totally kind of disappear into the, it's like fungal grass to me. It's like grass that's totally made of weird, squishy. Have you ever accidentally, have you been walking through the grass barefoot ever, and then you accidentally step on a mushroom or something, and it's the worst feeling ever because it's so like cold and wet? That's what I'm imagining this stuff is like, just kind of cold, wet, mushy mushroom grass. Nice, right? Really nice. Let me zoom out some more so we can see the whole thing, huh? There we go. Yeah, there's stuff on my desk I need to move. It's cluttered. This thing is turning out pretty cool. I like the way it's kind of... The tree is kind of disappearing into the mushiness. No. <laughs> If I zoom out all the way, you'll see that I'm just drawing on <laughs> one side of the paper here. Look at that. I didn't intend that, but it's all right. I mean, I, just because I don't want to draw for, like, forever, I probably won't fill up the whole paper, but, you know, we'll see. I'm trying to figure out how long I've been drawing for. I should have set a timer. Oh, I think it's been like 30 minutes. Okay, 32, 33 minutes. I'll go for a while longer. You guys hanging in there? What you guys working on? Let me know in the comments. Did you draw along? Just sit and watch? Are you, uh, for some reason, I always imagine that there's at least one person quilting during while they're watching my videos so if, so if you're that one person quilting uh you know let me know be happy to know who you are but let me know what else you're doing too just kind of extending this out uh I'm trying to think what else we can do up here this part looks a little bit unfinished. 
think it needs some more shading right here. Give it a little more body. Oh yeah. I like these. Uh, I think I want to add some more of these little things. They're like spores going off into the air. Maybe I can kind of draw like a... I want to draw like a... like a weird shape like this. This will be like a, like a, oh no, I don't know if this is making sense. I want it to be like a hole going down into it. Um, that the spores can be coming out of, you know, but I got to figure out how to shade it. So, it, so it makes sense. I don't know if this is right. You know, sometimes I think about it and then I don't like draw the lines, like I curve the lines the wrong way and then it doesn't make sense to the mind. You know, like if I drew the lines this way or curve them that way, it like wouldn't make sense. And then sometimes I tuck it away in my mind and get it right the next time and sometimes I don't. I don't think this is quite right, but it'll be okay. Hmm. Maybe some more shading right here. It's easy to, with this sort of thing, it's like easy to overdo it. What you don't want to do is like overdo it so that it suddenly becomes like the weirdest darking, dark, like darkest looking thing there. Like it can look weird or off or it can look like, you know, you can mess up a little bit, but don't like, don't struggle with it too much to the point where it's suddenly just like a dark mass of scribbly lines, and then uh, that's the first thing people see when they look at it, at the drawing, right? I'd much prefer it just look, it just doesn't make sense, then it looks like I spilled a bunch of lines right there or something, I don't know, you know what I mean? It's, it's better just to stop and then try to do it better in the next drawing than to keep working on it forever, I'm trying to rescue it when maybe it's not rescuable. And it could be that it'll look fine to most other people, and I'm just overthinking it. Just got to move on sometimes. All right, let's draw some more spores coming out of it, though. Some more dots. So far, not too much smudging going on. That's good. Kind of, it'd be cool if it, the, the spore cloud kind of came down behind this thing. Is it, I'm wondering though if it's clear that the spores are coming from this hole. I'm also wondering if it really matters. And maybe should there be like a denser part of the spore cloud or not? Kind of like a weird, uh, you know those pictures of, I was just looking at pictures of uh, like supernovas and uh, nebulas and stuff there's always like denser parts and then they spread out a little bit i don't know that's kind of what i'm drawing uh inspiration from for my spore cloud right now like these bigger chunks are the brighter stars in the nebula 
and there's all these other it's kind of like an inverted nebula these dots in a nebula would be the the bright spots and then the paper would be the blackness of space right now they're too evenly spread out i feel like see right now i was a little bit lazy with my dots there and a bunch of them landed right next to each other and almost became like an actual line which bugs me a little bit which is why you got to be careful might make that into like a circle there yeah that's better I'm gonna draw. Oh, oh, I'm smudging a little bit. You see these smudges here? I'm not sure where that came from. Maybe underside of my fingers there. Usually, when I use, I found that this kind of ink. Um, I guess it's some kind of. Mm, excuse me, burp. Uh, I think it's some kind of India ink that I put in these rotring pens. When I use these on this Bristol paper, it's a great combination of ink and paper that really I don't see much smudging with. It's maybe the least amount of smudging I see out of any ink and paper combination I use, which is one reason why I use that a lot. I used that in the last video I made, and then I also blacked in the area with Sharpie, which some people were telling me is not very um, archival. I mean, it says permanent marker, and then there's some... What does this AP thing mean? I can't read the, uh, I can't read what it says here around AP. A-C-M-I, AP. Creative Materials Institute Certified or something? Art and Creative Materials Institute Certified. Is that what it says? Conforms to ASTM D4235 or 6. It's kind of blurrily printed. Uh, but anyways, I guess that could mean anything. Maybe that just means it's non-toxic or something. And kids can eat it if they want to. Don't eat it, though. Don't take my word for it. Uh, not too long ago, actually a while ago, someone sent me an email saying that I should stop eating ink on video. Because, and then they sent me, I asked more for more information, they sent me a very well-researched and lengthy email about how a lot of inks are actually very toxic and have carcinogens and stuff in them. Much, um, even though, like, the companies don't, like, don't publish this info and even on, like, lots of, like, material data sheets and stuff like that, it doesn't have the info. It's, like, they're, like, um, incorrectly reported or something like that. It seemed very well sourced and I'm, for some reason I'm kind of inclined to believe the guy because you know, he was very persuasive. Also it's probably better to err on the side of safety in this sort of thing. But I mean that would be kind of, I know this is very grim and dumb to say but I mean can you imagine like in my biography one day, if I ever have a biography that, you know, like he got cancer from eating too much ink. I mean, that's like the perfect thing for like an ink artist. I'm definitely going to cut back on my ink consumption now though. And also all of you, please don't eat ink. It's bad for you. Please stick to normal human things like peanut butter and jelly and vegetables. Okay. I'm trying to be more, a more, uh, responsible youtuber I guess even though everyone is still responsible for their own actions just like me I'm sure I got the idea to ink eat ink from somewhere and I don't blame them for giving me the idea it's my own actions but still all right that spore cloud is looking pretty sweet I think nice little background kind of effect this can use some shading. Give it a little bit of oomph, as I say sometimes. Hmm. I feel like if I do this right, I can kind of really kind of make it look like it's 
hanging heavy. You know, right now, actually, the more I do this, it kind of looks like this is almost a weird alien bunch of grapes hanging at the end of this branch. Hmm. To be honest, I'm not really sure what else to add to this. Kind of, you know, you don't, I don't want to overdo it, and I kind of like how it looks. It looks pretty sweet, just like that, I think. Maybe a little bit empty over here, but maybe this emptiness makes this part more powerful. Or maybe it doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. Just like... <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. The, the, the lopsidedness. The imbalance. I mean, it's kind of gesturing this way and leaning this way. And the roots go this way. And the branch goes this way, right? I don't know. We'll zoom out though. You can still see it doesn't take up very much of the page, but that's okay. That is all right. You don't have to use up the whole page. Never think that. I might darken this in some more. Darken just a, just a bit of final, some final touches here. I'm, right now I'm kind of leaning back and like blurring my eyes a little bit to kind of get a overall feel for the kind of the balance and tone of the drawing. See where I want to add some more dark spots. You know how you kind of blur, your, unfocus your eyes to do those magic seeing pictures where you can see a 3D dolphin or a schooner. It's kind of what I'm doing right now. I refocus them when I draw though. It's just what, like right now, unfocused and now refocused. Yeah, I think that's about it. I think that's pretty good for this drawing. Let me know if you enjoy these videos or what other kind of videos you want. Um, I get a lot of requests for like uh, all sorts of videos. And I see, I read probably 90% of comments, all right, just because I uh, don't respond. I apologize I don't respond to all of them. I apologize. But thank you for all your comments. You're all very nice. And um, I hope you're all doing okay. Appreciate it. Okay, so take care and uh, all right, see you next time. All right, take it easy. Be nice to yourself. All right, goodbye, everybody. All right, goodbye. It's going to be fine. Every, maybe not everything, but a lot of things are going to be okay. I hope. All right. All right, goodbye for real now. All right. We'll check out this thing I made for uh, one of my classes. It's a complex volume, four cubes and four right triangle, triangular prisms in a grid organization. By the way, I do post a lot. I've started posting some of my school projects on Patreon. Uh, my Patreon is $1. I don't mean to put my school projects behind a paywall, but I also do. There are a lot of patrons I have on there, and I wanted to give them something. I don't really post much on there. If you want to look at some of my school projects, I, it's hard for me to post them anywhere else because they're like multiple page PDFs, which are hard to post on like Instagram or Twitter or whatever. So if you want to see those, I appreciate all the supporters on Patreon. Patreon, Thank you so much. And thank you all of you for just watching. Even if you uh, never comment or anything. Thank you for just being here and being you. All right? All right. Goodbye, everybody. All right.